good. Chris Everett Lloyd. It was unbelievable tennis. Let's pick it up now in the fourth game. It is 2-1. And these two players now are about to hit each other with every shot known in the sport. Twice Martinez goes on the attack. And twice first will drive her away. After an exhausting run, Martina misses the drop shot, but she came back to win that game. And so today, it'll be Martina Navratilova against Tracy Arthur. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Flushing Meadow and the semifinals of the men's and the women's final. We've got McEnroe and Gerald Addis underway already. Let's go to Pat Summerall for a report.
Dad, thank you so much. Right now, both players are on service in the first set. McEnroe is serving. He's forty. love. He trails 2-3 first set. We'll be back with the action here on CBS in just a moment. The 1981 U.S. Open from the National Tennis Center in Flushing Meadow, New York, is sponsored by IBM, helping put information to work for people. GE, at GE we bring good things to life. And by the 1981 Volkswagen. Volkswagen does it again. Thirty. Thirty.
I'm right here. I'll be right here. It is showdown time at the U.S. Open. In one men's semifinal, it'll be the defending champion, John McEnroe, against Vitas Gerolitis. In the first set, they're right on service. Then it'll be the calm Swede trying to win this tournament for the first time against Jimmy Connors, who ever so badly wants champagne one last time at the U.S. Open. Then you will also see the women's final. Tracy Austin, who has not lost a set, matched against Martina Navratilova, who battled her way into this championship match yesterday with an incredible three-set victory over the defending champion, Chris Everett Lloyd. This is in the second set. It's the fourth game. A remarkable point coming up here. Chris Everett Lloyd and Martina Navratilova are about to hit one another with every shot known in tennis. Twice Martina will charge in, and twice Chris will drive her back.
And after an exhausting run, Martina finally missed. But she would come back and win that game and the match. And now she'll have to do it all over again against Tracy Austin. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Brad Musburger. Welcome to Flushing Meadow and the U.S. Open. Down below, Vitas Gerolitis and John McEnroe. The first set, opening semifinal today. And to get more on that story, let's go to Pat Summerall. All right, Pat, thank you so much. It was 15-40, and Garolitis finally broke through in the first set. He won it 7-5. Now, McEnroe is under the gun. We'll be back with that in just a moment on CBS. Hey, 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 my man, you did it for me. One U.S. Open from the National Tennis Center in Flushing Meadow, New York, is sponsored by IBM, helping put information to work for people. GE. At GE, we bring good things to life. And by the 1981 Volkswagen. Volkswagen does it again.
15 love.
15 law. Jane Garolitis. McEnroe leads. Fifteen all.
30, 40. and roll lead, 4-2. Fifteen all. Thirty, fifteen.
40, 15. McEnroe leads for Thirty fifteen. Fifteen thirty. 
15 for him. Quel échange extraordinaire entre les deux hommes et deux. Please take your seat. Take a Forty, fifteen. the first game of the third set.
of 15. Fifteen thirty. Mac and roll lead to Law. Thank you.
time. Please take your seat. Quiet, please. Fifteen long. Fifteen all. Thirty fifteen. Let's 
first serve.
Thirty all. and roll. Mac and roll lead.
direction. Well, what are you looking at? Fifteen forty. Third set, McEnroe. McEnroe goes for third set, set six, six to two, lead, lead two sets set to one. one. Thank you. Back and roll wins the first game of the fourth set.
Four eight fifteen. I guess we're being a little critical of Gerald Itis on his return to serve, but when you have a look at the serve that just went down, it's, it's not that easy. Over at 106 miles an hour. If you watch McEnroe from this camera position, it's a great position. If you watch McEnroe's racket just before he hits the ball, you'll get an idea of where he's going to serve it. Nuke in that doubles match. Now, Stolle Stolle played oh. McEnroe and Fleming. That's the first time you'd played against McEnroe, wasn't it? No, I had played him before, but not for a couple of years. Um, I found, I, I thought I could pick his serve all right. To, he, I was standing on the first court returning, but Fred uh, had a lot of trouble on the backhand court. He was hitting him wide with a slider and then coming down mm -hmm. the middle. Third <laughs> You see that? I mean, that's just like a, a, a really good baseball pitcher. That one went over to 111 miles an hour. Let, let, let. First serve. When Macro serves to Gerolitis' forehand, he's more apt to hit it with more velocity because it has to do a little bit flatter normally to get it on that side. When he breaks it out wide, to break it wide, he has to put more spin on it. And there's our radar gun. She's giving us those speeds. Courtesy of Tennis Magazine. Good shot by Gerolitis. Off the tough serve. And he made a good move then. He moved forward to make the return. McEnroe slipped. didn't twist an ankle or something. It was not a very graceful fall as his father looks on. Looks like his left ankle. Of course, that could be a terrible, terribly bad break for John McEnroe. I mean, a break of the ankle. Let's see if we can see what happens. Paralyzed makes his half volley deep, come right towards McEnroe. And he just started to go down. I really couldn't see what happened. It looked as if, to me, Tony, his right ankle got trapped underneath as he fell backwards. 30 40. And Mr. and Mrs. McEnroe, concerned, obviously. 
trainer Bill Norris came out to, to check on John McEnroe, but John said he was okay. He's trying to walk it over. It's his left ankle. It is his Pat. left ankle, yeah. And those, that's the kind of thing that, uh, because he's hot, obviously warmed up, uh, it won't hurt too much now, but it could really be a problem for, Mr. for tomorrow. How much time does he have, Tony? I'm, I'm not sure what the rule is well, you have in terms of yeah. time. There is an injury timeout, Nuke, right? Yeah, you have 30 seconds between the points, and the umpire just said to him, and he was correct, he said, Mr. McEnroe, do you want to take some injury time? But you are allowed. I think it might be three or four minutes of injury time. We make specific rules like that when it's Captain the Davis Cup team. We do that with the opposing captain so you know exactly what can take place. It appears to be okay. Yeah. This is break point for Gerolitis. Best chance he's had. Second serve. He's okay. And Vetus down the other end is <laughs> grabbing his leg and he's saying, saying maybe, I'm injured, I'm injured. He said, maybe you ought to get a screen guild card if you can act like that. And I stand around and watch the guy limp around, work off the ankle injury, then he comes charged in the net like he's been shot out of a gun. didn't like the call. First serves at fault. Only on ESPN Classic. Here are Lydus, up 3-2 in the fourth. McEnroe leads two sets to one. Important game for Garolitis. He's gotten the service. Please break. take he your can't seats. Down now, get careless, and he can't get too cautious. See that crosswind coming in there. The this was the, this was on the last court change. McEnroe <laughs> not too pleased with the way things were going. Back live, love 15. First serve of fault. getting in trouble on his serve. I hear so many times that the best time to break back after you've been broken. Good quick hands by Garolitis at the net. 30.
That was a nice 30. deep serve then. He needs another one of them right here. Carolina's serving with the wind at his back. Gives a little more velocity, but it's sometimes harder to get down into the court. He heard you, Nuke. 40, yep, 30. The last, uh, the last two serves, I think, are the hardest ones he's hit in the match. 106 on that serve, and that's the first I think he's been over 100 miles an hour on a serve. Steve McEnroe served twice as many aces as Girolitis, eight to four. Well, that's a great shot. We were mentioning it earlier on that backhand side. McEnroe prepares so well. Side round of the net, good shoulder turn. Top spins the passing shot down the line, cross court, or comes up with that top spin lob, which you just saw. It's the first one he's made, really, in the match. The others he tried have been short. Advantage, Garolitis. Garolitis was able to hold on. He leads fourth. If you've ever missed... Flags up on top don't necessarily tell you what the direction is down on the court. I remember one year I played Frank Sedgman at Forest Hills in the stadium and my plan was when he made one volley to go offensive lob because he closed in so, so close and I kept looking at the flags on top of the stadium. I kept hitting lousy offensive lobs. Too dumb to realize that the wind was swirling a different way or moving a different way down at court level. Did you win? No. Nope. You had to ask me that, didn't you? Trying to be journalistic. Good deep shot by McEnroe. You know, I bet you in his heart, Vetus knows that ball was good. I don't understand why they try to intimidate a linesman like that. Here we go. He's inside the baseline. Their eyes are better than that. Cups being blown around by the wind, the ball boy picking them up over by where the players sit when they change courts. All of a sudden, McEnroe not serving as well as he had. He's not getting as many first serves in. Well, that was a good return. The ball was breaking into him. Had to hit this one right off his chest. Came up very high, too. See the racket face turned over there. Get the ball down. It was bouncing up so high. Well, another good return. Wow. He started returning a lot better in this fourth set. 30 all. What do you think he's doing, Tony, that's making him return serve better? I think he's stepping into it a little bit more. He's not just standing there flat-footed, and he's, he's been a little more aggressive. I think he's gambling a little bit more. Like the four he hit before, he was moving towards the center to take a bit of a chance. I agree with you. I think that's key that he's moving forward on the ball. 30 all. For Garolitis, obviously McEnroe doesn't like the call. This could 
pretty well salt the second set away. Will you be the judge? Was awfully close with one way or the other. Double faults. Seven for Carolinas, four for McEnroe, and McEnroe has served more of double the aces that Carolinas has served. Well, it was there. The cross court pass was there. He made one about 20 minutes ago off the same shot. Macro got a good first serve in there when he needed it, but Vita still made a good return. Should have gotten his volley away, but he didn't. Now yeah, it looks like Carolina wins the point outright, but the foot speed of McEnroe pays off. Now watch this. Good racket preparation on the move. Just shot right out of a cannon. Come back live. It's advantage McEnroe. Yes. Not only is Gerolitis returning serve better now, but he's starting to get some across court, which we said he had to do. On that backhand side, he's getting it across court, and he's getting some low down on McEnroe's forehand volley. It's deuce. I don't think McEnroe's forehand vo volley is as safe as his backhand volley. already has one break in this set. in an empty seats. leading four games three in the fourth set. McEnroe won set number two and set number three. Garolitis won the first set 7-5. Fifteen long. You know, we've talked about service percentages and, and how important it is to get first serves in, but when it's this gusty a day, when you think about it, they, they, they're doing a darn good job. It's the toss gets blown around. Neither one of them seemed to toss it that high. They don't toss it much higher than they need it. Thank <laughs> you. 
I think what happened there, he, uh, McEnroe wanted to go down the line and he saw that Gerolitis was standing there covering it. Forced him into that rather unusual wide shot. Just missed. 40-15. Crowd starting to get into it a little bit more now. They want to see a five-setter. Game Carolitis. It looks more and more like they're going to get their wish, too. Carolitis leads 5-3. Carolitis leads 5-3. 108 miles an hour on that last serve for Vitas. That's his best of the day. It's really interesting that he, he went for three sets where he wasn't getting over 100 miles an hour, and all of a sudden, the last few games, he's 105, 108. It's an important game for McEnroe because if he holds serve and doesn't manage to break, at least he'd start the final set with his serve. See, Gerlaid is 59% of his first serves, McEnroe 55. And I think, again, with this blustery day, it's not as bad as those percentages might look. It's a tough day to really be a good server. What percentage is acceptable? Shot. Love 30. 30. And I'd say 65 to 70 percent is what you you know you're really shooting for, Mr. and Mrs. McEnroe. Got to be a little concerned for their son at this stage. off in the last game he went around one of those second serves hit a forehand down the line went for the same shot then hit by Vetus and obviously upset with himself. Good chance to on a short ball to try to get in. It was a little tougher than it looked, I think, because it had a lot of topspin on it. It jumped around. The wind probably moved it a bit. Game McEnroe. Can Sprite make you a more Do you love tennis? Carolitis will serve at 5-4 in the fourth. There's Marv Richmond, the president of the USTA, and Marv will have a rather important announcement to all of us to make before the women's final start, along with our president of sports, Van Gordon Sauter. I'll be interested to see what McEnroe's attempt here is on the return, whether he really goes after it or he tries to just get it down low. Obviously, Gerolitis serving for the set. McNamara's got to try to break. Unforced errors. McNamara more in the forehand. Gerolitis more in the backhand.
15 off. Well, the one thing Gerald Lottis can be sure of, if he doesn't come into the net, McEnroe will. And I think the net is the place to be in this particular game. didn't have time or at least didn't get set up very well to try that back and backhand passing shot footwork was not good at all 30 15 there was a good volley from Gerolitis but the return was pretty good double set point for Gerolitis this could get him even at two sets apiece in this semifinal match wins the fourth set as McEnroe lands in Frank Parker's lap. They should have a seat for him in the champion's box. Sets are two all. And Peter Garolitis father. Six four sets are two all. Sets are two all. How much now, Tony, does the pressure start to tell on McEnroe? With, we talked about it at the beginning of the show, the pressure of everyone saying, can he win it three times in a row, the first person since Tilden to do it? Five, Ranked number one in the world, he's won Wimbledon. All the pressure, I think, is on McEnroe right now. Garolitis said that coming into the tournament, he said he's not expected to do well, so not much pressure. We'll see who responds well to the pressure this fifth set. There's pressure now. Excellent return by Garolitis. Boy, McEnroe was winning so easily after the third set, you just couldn't imagine it was going to go to five. But you've got to hand it to Vitas. He's really turned it around. The key being improved first serve one thing, and the other return of service better. serve for McEnroe. Great chance for Gerolitis. 15-30, second serve. Oh, it was a bad forehand he played from the back of the court. He tried with a lot, with a lot of topspin, but no depth on the shot at all. You. The best room, man. <laughs> I think if I were talking to McEnroe now as a coach or something, I'd tell him to pick up the tempo a little bit. His own gait as he moves around the court and be a little more aggressive. Got to start taking charge. Good 
shot. And Garolitis was able to get it back cross court with some authority. Something he didn't do for the first three sets. We're back at Deuce. Sets are two all. New Yorker against New Yorker. Friend against friend. He's giving McEnroe some trouble running around that second serve, isn't he? He sure is. Now watch how close he gets to the net for this one right here. Watch where Gerlitis is. I don't think he's really trying to make that drop volley. It ended up being a short volley. He would have won it anyway, so it's break point for Gerlitis. This awfully good swinging serve. Hundred and nine miles an hour. This is the first first game of the fifth set. That's a pretty fast serve to, to put a swinger in at 109 miles an hour. And that is Garolitis. Another break point for Garolitis. Could put tremendous pressure on the defending champion, John McEnroe, if he's down this early break in the fifth set. What about that miss volley there, Tony? Nerves? Well, you talked about earlier. It wasn't a earlier. difficult one. He, he just kept running right on through it. Didn't bend over at all. Looked almost black days, going careless. Three wide serves in a row in that court by McEnroe. The first one, Garolitis got cross court for a winner. McEnroe's won the other two points. that by six or eight feet. Wind bottom, I guess. Is that or somebody talking as he's starting to serve? Rip. Second, Second serve. serve. Only just went into it, just mm -hmm. took the line. Very close so to being a double. Once again, Vetus was going to run around his backhand, hit the forehand. Probably try to do it again. <laughs> Another volley that I thought was hit rather nervously, but what a good second serve that he put in. Yeah, it was it was designed for Gerlotis running around it, so he said, well, I'll go that way and try to catch him. But Vetus really nailed it. It's another break point. Now in the ad court, as you mentioned, Trey, he's gone wide three times in a row. Let's see if he comes down the middle now. Oh. Yes. Super job by McEnroe to get out of trouble. Garolitis made a good deep approach right here. He hesitates, sees it's real deep, and he comes. This volley was hit with some good pace and relatively deep. You see Garolitis covering the down the line. The ball goes cross court. And again, it is deuce. McEnroe struggling. Advantage McEnroe. Gee, he got that volley late again, too. It was almost behind him when he hit it.
Four, sir. Four, sir. day in New York. Let's take a Five center in the semifinals between McEnroe and Carolitis. Really what upsets the players most is the is the people walking right behind the uh, the opponent. If it catches your eye it can really lose your concentration. Let Let first serve. Slip. See after the return here. See what happens when he tries to recover. He slipped there, put his hand down, tried to stop and get back. Almost fell down again. And this is dry, hard surface. Shot. 30-15. How do you slip like that, Nuke, on this kind of a surface? Is it the, the I've never, I haven't seen him do it before. He slipped twice today, and. Um, he slipped in one of the other matches, coming to the net, went down. Four, 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 four. At least at this moment, the tide has swung in Garolitis' favor. He is cruising along. He is playing better, serving better, returning better. McEnroe is struggling. Garolite is picking up the pace on his serve. The radar gun tells us is he's consistently serving over 100 miles an hour now. McEnroe, 71 first serves in plays, won 47 of those points. One on the fifth. the strength of McEnroe's second serve that last percentage we just saw up 54 second serves in and he's won 30 of those points whereas Gerolitis on his second serve is only winning about a third of the points ball 30 Again, McEnroe struggling on his serve. He grabs his throat and says, I'm choking. I, I don't think there's anything, any doubt about it. His last service game, he played three or four volleys, which were very uncharacteristic for him. They were not well hit volleys at all, bad errors, and now two simple errors in this game. I need you to find these people. Sunday night at 9, only on ESPN Classic. Fifteen thirty. 
15 40. Double break point for Garolitis. Tremendous chance here for Garolitis. And at the moment, McEnroe is in a lot of trouble because not only is he fighting Garolitis, but I think he's having to fight himself. He put his hand up to his throat a while ago and said, I'm choking. I think he really meant it. John's parents on the left of that picture. Again, he slows things down. But within the 30 second time limit, so no one can really argue about it. First serve. This is a time I think I think uh, Macker ought to spin the first serve and get in, back it up well, start put a little more spin on him, forget a little pace for the time being, and get a higher percentage. And only 54 percent right now. Not Consist good. Consistently going down. See, that's not even close. That was halfway down the net. So he's having some timing problems. Great play by McEnroe. Good coverage at the 30, net right four. here. This is a tough one. Couldn't really do much with it. Just try to recover. Didn't get it deep, but he guessed cross court. Now he guesses cross court. And boy, he really clipped off that volley. It is still break point for Garolitis. Not many first serves going in now. If you were right before Tony, he's lost all his rhythm at the moment on the first serve. Just long. Deuce. Take another look. And Gerlice didn't hit this real hard, but he directed it well. Macro chose to let it go because he realized he had no play on the ball. Well, it looked like it might have just barely been over the baseline. Again, it's hard to tell on the replay. It looked like it was out. His body blocked our view for just a second. It's Deuce. See if Macro spins a couple of serves here instead of trying to drive it. You know, that last point, that was a heck of a second serve. And it took a little extra time, too, so we're getting ready. Another good and second serve. Second Deep in the court, right at the body. Also a good half volley it had some authority because Garolitis did a good job, got the return down. You would like to or expect that you might get a little more defensive return for your opponent, but that wasn't the case. McEnroe now has the ad, trying to go ahead 2-1 in the final set. might have surprised everybody, including certainly Garolitis. Bob Vila tells homeowners how to get out from under credit card debt. Hi, I'm Bob Vila, and these are offers to get credit cards. It's pretty... Light as a feather, stiff as a board. All right. 18,892 in attendance today. About five times they set the record. 15 law. That's not the Tennis Magazine speed gun. That's also not a, a Minox, you know.
saw come in before the point was over. What are you talking about? Who's who, who's seen? Well, no one, none of the players saw it. He, he couldn't have possibly seen he was watching my ball. That was after the point. How can you call a light if you didn't see it? Why? You didn't see it. You didn't see it, how can we call a left? That is our microphone he just massaged. You think Garolitis is right now? Yeah, the, uh, he definitely saw the ball come back. But did you see it? That's the, but it was, then how, how can we play it if you did not see it? But you did not see it, so how can you call it? I don't know. Can you answer me that question? Time warning, McEnroe. Time warning against McEnroe. Can you give me a warning? When did the 30, when did the 30 seconds start? Before it started. But then how can you give me a warning before it started? Wait, you said 30 seconds. Wait, not we're not permitted to argue? We have about 18 seconds left. Well, you didn't see it. I just want to know how you can do that. Can you answer that? I just want you to answer that question. Macro might have broken his racket when he hit that microphone. He took a look at it on the way out. Mr. McEnroe has a broken string. Third, courtesy of CBS microphones. He has a broken string. We have a broken microphone. A bit unfair to Vitas Garolitis at this stage. I don't think there's any question but that he did see the ball come out of the stands during the point. And that's an automatic let. It is 2-1 McEnroe in the fifth set. Garrett 15 love. 15 love. So after all that, the point is replayed. Fifteen all. And now we're right back to where we started. Well, the big thing here for Vitas after all that discussion is we've got to keep his concentration. So it makes it tough when someone stops playing, complains and that, and you're just sort of left out in the cold waiting for the action to start again. Sometimes feel, um, Tony, that uh, you know, in a situation like that, if someone's going to go up and and uh, talk at the net, you ought to go up yourself and get involved in it so that you stay in the action. When I go, and classic. Double break point for McEnroe. Still a break point. Three-one in the final set. Tony, do you think that delay had anything to do with that? I wouldn't be surprised. It was a quite a long delay. 
Carolitis had things rolling fairly well. Didn't get any many good first serves in and missed a couple balls. That is now history. Macro serving at 3-1 in the final set. See if Vetus let this one go, think it was going out or whether he couldn't reach it. I think it was just too good. Well, it was sure landed right in the corner. 15 love. Good serve. Nope. Did you ever do anything like get involved with a crowd or argue to psych yourself up? No, but I think that, um, I really think that, that John, um, does do this, you know, to let off steam, takes the pressure. He was starting to choke a couple of games ago. He looks, looks like he's got his rhythm back now, and I think an argument gets all the nervousness out of him. Oh 106 miles an hour on the ace. I would certainly, if I was playing out there, though, I would have gone up to the net, I think, and got involved in the argument. Believe the price of popcorn. It's a crime against humanity. And it's seven only on ESPN Classic. Pat Summerall with Tony Trabert and John Newcomb. John McEnroe and Fetus Garolitis. Men's semifinal. It is 4 1 McEnroe in the fifth. Garolitis about to serve. Fetus got to get it geared up now. He's down a break. He was on a pretty good roll there at the end of the fourth set early in the fifth set. Things have changed around for whatever reasons. And time is running out. things swing around in sport isn't it the first two service games of this set that McEnroe had we just had five break points yeah here he trails 4-1 how low he picks this one up to the ground. McEnroe played a heck of a cross-court shot. Forty miles. Serve took a funny bounce. Might have hit the line. Swing one wide here and try to come in behind. He's had some success going wide. Toss. So he took a double pump there. Sammy got ready, he was about to serve, then he stopped, started his routine again. I don't know 
what that was about. The good second serve it was indeed. McEnroe had been running around hitting forehands on return, so he went in that side two. and got away with it. I don't think there's any question, but that the wind was bothering Vitas. Because again, it's picked up a little bit. Seems to be at McEnroe's back. See Mackner grab his throat. I choke. Just get tentative, and nervous about the situation. Be surprised if John doesn't serve and get into that net right away. Good hustle by Garolitis. Fifteen all. Got there in time to take a sort of a swipe at the ball. He couldn't really make a decent stroke. Yeah. Hasn't tried to lob too much, Trim. No, he really has. Of course, that kind of a situation might have tried to flick a defensive lob up in the air because he was really out of the point, but he has not lobbed very much. One of the problems was lobbing out there today because of the wind swirling around. Very hard to judge the ball. Hit it hard or soft. Sort of did a double pump. He got ready to serve his second serve and backed off. Started again and up served a double. Nice and quiet here today, Patrick. We've been talking all day about that wind. And that wind direction will have the airplanes from LaGuardia going in the opposite direction. So it's not all bad. Could be one of Vetus' last chances. It's not a bad one. 15-30 and looking at the second serve. Shot. <laughs> Double break point for Garolitis. The Jimmy Swagger telecast. Maybe he'll try to run around it. He's been having some success with that. He did. McEnroe thought so, so he kicked the ball into Garolitis's forehand. Might have surprised Vetus a little bit. Still break point. Well, McEnroe's just been coming up with some great second serves on break points. And with the wind at your back, that's not always easy. It can carry out on you a little bit. See how deep this one is. I bet you it swings to the backhand side. Good serve. Letting it get away. Here's a short ball, and in he comes. Yes. Didn't do anything with that volley right there, nor with that one, and he couldn't recover. The last volley he hit the forehand one, he, it was there, wasn't it, Tony, to angle away for a winner? The first one was even there to do more than he did with it, Nuke. He was very tentative with it. I don't blame him. I know it is pressure time, but you got to take a chance when you're behind. McEnroe serving at deuce. Oh, 
And McEnroe wins this match. He's got his second serve to thank for it. Another good one. Well, that was a good shot from Gerolitis because I don't think he was in a position to really play a passing shot. Instead of doing that, he drove the ball back low. Low on the forehand volley side, right at the body. Tough shot to volley. Again, great point. Gerolitis. And again, McEnroe slows things down. Gerolitis first service percentage, 61% to just 53 for McEnroe. Certainly not a good serving day for McEnroe. Got it on the second bounce. An excellent serve by John McEnroe. About halfway through the third set, McEnroe's percentage, I believe, was around 62%. Been going down since then. And Gerolitis was lower and it's coming up. Well, that was a good first serve then. is not just missing a lot of first serves. He's missing a lot of them by a huge margin. He's hit some down below, halfway down below the net, and that ball was four or five feet long. That's a great distance for a good, good player to miss a serve. Another break point for Vita Scarolitis. Again, Vitas made the return. He had the choice of where to hit that return then and he went at the body on the forehand side low he's been getting some errors out of that game over oh Dude. my gosh what a break for McEnroe Vita says oh man what do I have to do excellent serve by McEnroe right here and not a good return. Vitas did a good job to get it back, but it came right in at McEnroe. Gusty wind, the ball ticked the top of the net and rolled down. Unfortunately for Gerolitis, it was on his side, so again, it is deuce. The ball hit the top of the net twice before it came over. McEnroe. that time. Couldn't pull it off. Now McEnroe has the ad. Has a chance to go ahead 5-2 in this fifth and final set. Been playing at least three and a half hours. SPN Classic. Fifteen law. That was a smart play by Gerolitis. Instead of volleying the ball low down in front of him, be defensive, he stopped, backed off, let the ball come up, and then was able to drive a backhand. McEnroe's job here is not to worry too much about this one, but concentrate on his serve coming up. If he can get even here at 30 all, knock a couple of winners off and work on it. But he has the service break he needs. Nine aces for McEnroe, six for Vitas. Third. 
30-15. Not a very confident swing at that second serve. The ball might have been blown around a little bit, but he didn't really go after it. It's 30 all. 30 all. Now I think McEnroe will be worrying about this game time. Right, exactly. After 30 all, you work as hard as you can. Double false is about even. It's a lot of double faults, so we are in a five set match on a windy day. Like that, it's match point. The wind blew that ball all over the place. It had to. Wind did move it, but it was a bit of a nervous shot. But you got to feel a little sorry for Vitas. He's trailing 5-2 in the fifth down match point, and he's had nine points to break McEnroe's serve in this set. And hasn't been able to do it. <laughs> Terrific hey. second serve by Garolitis. has the advantage. We talked about McEnroe having to live off his second serve. Now Gerolitis is having to do the same thing. the shoe tying trick again. Gerolitis with his back to the wall is when you're trying to break serve this first point is a real key one. John McEnroe in the near court beat us Gerolitis at the other end. Sets are two all. McEnroe serving in the fifth at 5-3. And 15 love. Let, Let for serve. Carolina is still trying to step into the ball in the return, which is good. He's got to make some things happen. He can't hope for McEnroe to make errors. Got to produce. Very windy now. Second serve really took Gerolitis all the way out of court. He was beyond this, the double sideline when he made contact. Uh, McEnroe closing in on this semifinal match. This will move him into the finals against the winner between Borg and Connors. And try to win it three times in a row. 40 love. Vitas doesn't think the serve was good. Triple match point coming up. Not very much of an argument, which tells me he doesn't really think it was out. Just hoping. Vitas gives some mock applause, but that wasn't the lines person that he thinks missed the other one. It was the person in the back. Oh, 
Oh boy, what a what a basic sitter that McEnroe had there. That's called chip and charge. Oh, <laughs> just chip the ball back and charge and pray a lot. Well, it helps too if you stick your tongue out at your opponent as you run in, Tony. <laughs> if you well, have that much time. Still double match point for McEnroe. thinks the ball was out. The umpire has already said. The umpire now is calling the score. That means it's over. McEnroe still waiting at the net for Venus to come up. Scores 5 7, 6 3, 6 2, 4 6, 6 3. McEnroe still standing there waiting to shake hands. If Vitas came back and shook his hand, can't blame McEnroe. Unfortunate that the match ends on a controversial call. But John McEnroe, the defending champion, will take another look and see if we can tell. High volley. Looked good, looked like it hit right on the sideline. And we certainly apologize for the profanity that you might have heard coming from Vitas Garolitis, who now exits the court in anger. But John McEnroe, the defending champion, is in the finals. Vitas was a great friend and was the best player of all the players I knew the best. It was almost like a brother for me, and, uh, and we spent a lot of time on the court and off the court together and uh, I mean during those years we both played on the circuit and we both were top players. It was great years. I mean it was just great being around Vitas. I mean he was I mean, an unbelievable person and you know well respected all over the world and, and a great personality. People loved him. Vitas was like a big brother that I never had in a sense. He was very charismatic. Uh, very friendly towards other people, very popular with players as well as fans. Uh, energy just inexhaustible. Uh, sort of seen out at night spots, so sort of uh, was in the papers for that type of thing as well. So it was just sort of something that brought tennis up in terms of people thinking about tennis because tennis is not one of the biggest sports in America. And so he, had to the, he added to the popularity of it. Playing guitar was probably his biggest love. He introduced me to that. He pretty much introduced me to everything that I do. We made enough money so that we could live comfortably, go wherever we wanted to go, but we kind of had our own little rat pack. I know Mac and I used to go to all the title fights when Ali was at his prime. Mm -hmm. uh, Borg and I would go to the best soccer matches in Europe. Uh, it was just, we were really like brothers, and it was really a family. And I know that if I ever got in trouble, I know one of those guys would come and help me and vice versa. What happened after my career was, you know, I kind of started believing my press. And I used to try to stay out later and later and still win matches, which I did. But eventually it caught up to me. And uh, I think after I stopped playing, it wasn't a drug in the booze, but I was just kind of in a, in a funk, in a depression, because the, uh, the high that you got playing in front of people, entertaining, nothing will ever replace that. <laughs> Always the playboy. Everywhere I turn, he's had influence on me. Even broadcasting which is something that I didn't really think that I would entertain. Hearing Vetus do it and giving it an edge that was uh, much more up to date, at least in my opinion. Thanks a lot, Fred. Bad luck, Andre. Uh, what was it in, during the changeovers? The music was bothering you, the atmosphere you know, or something? You know, people come out here to watch tennis. Eh? We all have to learn from our mistakes, and God knows I made them, and Vetus did, Bjorn, Jim, you name it. His biggest problem and his biggest positive are probably both the same, always trying to make other people happy instead of himself a little bit. It was just great being around Vitas. I mean, he was I mean, an unbelievable person and, you know, well-respected all over the world and, and a great personality. People loved him. 
They love to see him play, and, and we just had a great time.